nice long skinny piece. You, you saw that originally I was going to do it horizontally and I just felt good about it being a vertical. So this is where I ended up when I last worked on it a couple of days ago. And now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna finish off some of the details. One of the things I know I wanna do, and let me pull this in close. I love this periwinkle blue. So I feel like I need something to warm, uh, to uh, cool this piece off a little bit. It's all pretty warm colors, all pretty earth tone colors. So I am gonna add that blue. Um, I think I might add a striped vase, I'm not sure yet. But let me, let me get my stuff together and I'll get back and show you. Okay, so before I get started back in adding a lot of detail, I do wanna add a few more papers. I always love to add papers. Um, just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. So um, I really, or just to add and finish things off, um, I will probably go around my, my background color again. Um, if I do, you'll see that in this video. So for now, I want to just add in a little bit of detail with uh, some extra color. Now, these little pieces that I'm using right now are just pieces of my palette, of my palette paper. And I'm going to use them. Let's see, I can add a couple stems in here. Let's. Add this one in, and I'm just using my Varathane, oops, to get these guys to lay down. There's one. I've got another one. And I, I'm telling them, it doesn't really matter, they can be irregular. Um, this, this guy up here, could use one, and I can see that my little pencil is gonna run there, but that's okay. Let me get him to lay down. I think I want him to come more this way. Get rid of that stabilo and come back and clean that up later. And, and you can vary you know, easily. I can vary the colors in this. Let's move him up a little bit. Or down a little bit, whatever the case may be. Come on. Get on now. So it just it helps define it just a little bit. A piece here I really like because it's, uh, you know, it's just paint scraped off on, onto my, when I finish my palette. Um, and when I'm done for the day, I just, I just brush my palette paper, the paint all over my palette uh, paper, because I know that's gonna make some, for some good, Good papers for me to use in the future. Of paper right here that has no rhyme or reason to this other than it could be a nice little element to um, put in the background here. I might want to take my stabilo and just round that out. Come on, stick down. There we go. Okay, so now for adding a few bright colors, I, I 
thought this was kind of a fun color. It's very salmon-y. I don't want a lot of it, but I could create a couple of little stamens coming out of here. Now, we know that this is probably a tulip, but maybe not. It can be anything I want it to be. Let me see if I'm even gonna like this. So it's really a really pretty color. Um, and let's see. Do I want to? I want to make sure I want to do this before I commit. Do I want to make a line coming down? Do I want to make stripes? Um, I'm feeling like maybe stripes might be a little busy. Do I want to make this whole bottom uh, this color? Maybe just make, here's a good way to test it. I think I like it. I'm not 100% sure though. I could leave the base green and add, just add some little punches of that color that really make no sense at all. Just sticking my finger in it and hitting on a couple of those little dots, which really brightens up that top. Got four of those. Let me just stick one over. Where do I want that? Big decisions. I like where I like where that all is right now. Um, maybe I just need to go for it. Okay, I like that. I like the straight base. But I, I feel like now I need more up on the top of this color. And I also might like when I go back to add a Stabilo stripe on this. I'm doing it right now. Again, my stripe doesn't, my line doesn't have to be perfect. You can see I'm doing it pretty loose. I've already got this drawn down here. I like that. Got this circle. Don't want this to be a circle. I like that. I like, I enjoy just going and, and um, wandering around and finding places I can do a little 
a little Stabila little drawing. Maybe I'll just do those two since that one has the blue on it. Um, this is kind of a big flower. So I want to bring that out a little bit. Um, I also had another piece of paper that is not the same paper as this, but it's the same color. And that might be fun just to add down here as a shape. Or maybe right there. Okay, changing location. I'm gonna move it over to this side since I don't have a lot going on over here. Let me get that paper wet. It's gonna lay down a lot better once it's, it's wetted a bit. And already I like this piece better with just a little bit that I've done so far. Um, I don't think I have to do a lot more. So what I do want to do, uh, let's see, is that all the blue I need? I think that is all the blue I need. It's kind of crazy. Kind of a, um, kind of a crazy little floral. I'm going to do a couple of these on here. Yep, that's done. I'm done with that. Done with that blue. So I'm doing a little bit of a lighter, um, a, a background that's still light but has a little color to it. I'm actually mixing Viridian a little bit of that periwinkle, that light ultramarine. I'm adding just a touch of, of raw umber to it and mixing it with white. And I like this color. It freshens it up a little bit. I'm going to take that color up. seriously over the whole thing. I just wanted to add a little bit of um, little color here. I might just take right up to that line. And I just feathering this color on. Um, because who knows, I might go back over it with the uh, Titan Buff once again. Um, my backgrounds, uh, the reason I like them so much is because there's never, I just keep going back and forth and back and forth until it gets to a place where I'm happy with it until it gets to a place where I like the way it looks with my, uh, with the flowers that I had going on. Um, underneath this, there is white, Titan buff, a layer of a blue that I mixed up. Um, and then I went over it again with the Titan Buff and another layer of white. I just go back and forth, back and forth until I get it where I want it. Like that. And let me stand back. Okay, now I'm taking parchment. Let's see what this does. I'm going to take a parchment and add just a touch of uh, raw umber to it. And again, not sure this is where I want to go, but it doesn't hurt to keep trying it. Uh, trying colors to see which ones you're, you are really going to resonate with, which which ones are going to make you go, oh yeah, this is done. 
like I, I like it mixed right over that light blue that I just went over. Um, it works really well. Softens that out because it might have gotten a little bit more pastel-y than what I wanted, but it's still wet. So I can work it in. And, and it also leaves that, that light blue, that light green blue in right around some of the objects because I never paint all the way. I like to, to let some of that history show through. Once you've started putting on so many coats, um, it's easy just to kind of feather over things to get it back where you want it. Now, as you can see, I came over, I wasn't wild about so much blue against all of these neutral earthy colors. So I mixed a green using my, um, my lime green that I used in the piece. It wasn't, I think I'm just not wild about too much color being back here. So now I'm going over, I added white to that light green and uh, I'm coming back over everything. So the point here is you can just keep going and going and going until you get to a color you like, to a spot you like, the way that you feel good about it. Um, that is my recommendation. That is what I do. And if I don't like a color, I don't put the camera away and go, oh, this isn't working. I just keep working it until I find something I like. to brighten this up now that I've made that so so poppy um and I really like orange I like orange so I just took a piece of painter's paper and put some orange on it I'm gonna let that well maybe I'm not gonna let that dry let me just tear a couple little pieces and see what I can do to pop this out a little bit Still a little wet, but just adding, adding a little bit of color up there, I think that's gonna do it. So um, let me let this dry, let this dry, and I'll come back and we'll do that. Better yet, rather than add um, orange flowers, I am, I think I've got enough papers going on here. I can just add some nice, Nice painterly. You just go right over that paper. Yeah, I, I like that. I'm not going to do it on all of them. Um, let's see. Not that one. We don't want that one. 
could do a little chunk on this one. Oh yeah, I like that. Now I want to keep the eye jumping around, so I'm going to go here to here to maybe just a spot up here. Brings the eye up there. Could do a little chunk here or here. And keep all my orange right in this area. Um, if I go up here, it's too much in a line. Anywhere up there, it just goes too much in a line. I could go right here, um, but I like how that fades off. Maybe just a touch. And that really um, brightened this up to me and brought that vase into play. Grab my color shaper and put a little heavier application. And then I can kind of mush it around. So um, so that orange is covered over part of the flower. Um, this is where having wrinkles in your paper um, plays in really nicely because you can catch on those creases and get some really nice effects. So now that I've laid it all out where I want it to be, and I, I'm not sure you can see that, I'm gonna pull it in really quick. I love those little, um, the little ridges that are created. Let's see if I can set this down without rattling you up too much. Um, you get a nice heavy application and it creates some really great textures. I'm loving this. I'm loving it now. Get a little bit in there. Pull your eye down. I am pretty close to calling this done. I do believe. Um, all the colors really work for me. Uh, it's a little wacky, a little crazy, and I like it like that. So I think I'm gonna go in and, and, and darken up my, um, let me see, maybe I'll do that with a palette knife, with a color shaper. And just hit some areas down here so it's filled in a little bit more. I'm going to put it right on my color shaper. Okay. And I said I was going to call that done, but I'm not. I'm gonna bring you in a little closer. Let's see if I can get this. Um, Cause I wanna show you what I do with my um, Stabilo. I take a small brush. Let's just use this little brush. This will work fine. And I use my, my can a Verithane, a pretty full can. And um, I can either, you wanna set your Stabilo in. I can either take water, which I'll show you that, taking a little bit of water and working my, my pencil, because you see it can create some fun little, little smears and little blurbs. And then I can go back and, you know, soften those out. I can also take my Verithane 
and do that all in one shot. I can get it to smear up my stabilo and set it in all at the same time. I can scrape some of it out if I don't want it. And as I'm working it, I'm also sealing it in, setting it in. Now, this particular color, the Stabilo right now, isn't, isn't reacting a lot because I put it, when I put it on, the paint underneath was wet, so that in itself kind of set it in. And you can go around the whole painting. I know I did this. I like how it, it darkens the Stabilo once you go over it. It also gives you the ability to um, wipe it out if it's too much. And for me, this is not too dark of a line because the, my, the bottom that I have, my tabletop is so dark. I'm going to clean that out a little bit. Mess it up. I've got these guys down here. Let me see. Let me back up a little bit for that. Sorry for the shaking. Just give it one nice swoop. So there you go. That's how I like to do my stabilos. And um, I can take care of it all at once. It's all set in. I don't have to worry about it because when I do top coat and seal everything, I will use uh, the Verathane. So I wanna make sure when I go over everything with that Verathane, that it's not going to um, smear everything I've done with the Stabilo pencil. I know I'm talking very disjointedly. Sometimes it's hard to paint and talk at the same time uh, and concentrate on what you're doing. And I love this little detail work. It makes me really happy to do. So if you can remember to go over your whole painting as you're doing this, as you're putting your stabilo down, um, it makes it a lot easier to remember where you have it. I think I'm pretty done with this. I can keep fussing with it. Um, and I might do that after a day or two. So I've got all my pencil marks over here, but not only a couple little on this side. I guess that's good. You know what I could do is I could make this circle a circle to repeat these circles down below. So you always have your eye going back and forth and seeing, you know, where it's going to take you. I think I'm done. I just want to give my eye somewhere to go up here. And there was a little chunk that I, I filled in. He can stay. Um, you know what I was thinking of doing? I don't know if you can see this. I was thinking of just drawing a little simple grid here. There, I like that. And there you go. This time I really think I am done. So I'm gonna let it set for a couple of days. Um, I've got other projects I'm working on, other paintings I'm working on. So um, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.